Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we are going to find the perimeter of this rectangle. And if we look at the dimensions of this rectangle, they are expressed as variable expressions. So what we want to do here, of course, is use the given information to find the perimeter. And I really don't want to give you too much more information beyond that because I want to give you a full opportunity to solve this problem all on your own. So if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. It might be a little difficult to type in because you do have some powers here going on, but just do your best. Uh, so put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to uh, solve this step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so if you're not sure what the perimeter uh, is or what, it's, uh, what it means, I'll explain this all in one second. But let's go ahead and take a look at the answer here. The answer is the following. We're going to raise this right here. The perimeter is 14x cubed y plus 10x squared y minus 6x squared y squared plus 12y cubed. Now, here's the deal. Uh, these are what we call terms in algebra. And if you wrote this uh, and you have the same terms but in different order, that's okay. Uh, basically, you did this correct as well. Okay, so the only time you want to uh, be thinking about the order when it comes to respective terms is if you have something like, let's say, 2x minus 3x squared plus 1. It is uh, more, it's appropriate to write this what we call uh, standard form, highest to lowest power. So we would want to write this as negative 3x squared because that's our highest power. And then our next highest power is 2x. That would be 2x. And then, of course, we have our 1. So we're going to take this uh, expression in all these various terms and write them to highest and lowest power. Uh, so that would, uh, that again, that's called standard form. But in this particular situation, it's not so clear on which is the highest power because we have the cube here, cubed here. So just write this in any particular way. But this is the answer. And if you got this right, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100%. And a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you solved an interesting little perimeter problem today. They'll be so excited to hear about that. They might even take you out to dinner. You never know. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. And the first thing we need to understand is what is the perimeter? Now, hopefully, you remember learning this back in elementary school, and the perimeter is nothing more than the total distance around a figure. It could be anything. It could be a rectangle, a square. It could be some sort of crazy-looking object like this or something like so. And typically, when you're dealing with perimeter problems, you know, you have something, you know, uh, more interesting, right? So what is the perimeter? Well, it's again, it's the sum total uh, distance around a figure. So you, in other words, you're going to take this distance, you're going to add it to this distance, you're going to add to that distance, you're going to add it to that distance. The, the grand total is the perimeter. So in this particular case, you would just take this, 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 and go all the way around, add all that stuff up. Uh, but when you're actually doing perimeter problems that involve units of measure like inches, feet, centimeters, you got to make sure you put those in because you are talking about distance. All right, now we are dealing with a rectangle here. So that should tell us something, okay? Now these little uh, squares here in the corner indicate that these are 90 degree angles or right angles. So by definition, this is a rectangle. So what do we know about rectangles? Well, this side, we know the opposite sides are congruent. That's just a fancy math word. Uh, that means that this side is equal to this side. Opposite sides are the same distance, same length. So this over here is a also 7x cubed y. And then these two sides are congruent. In other words, they're the same. So we have two of these and two of these. So what is the grand total? Well, if we just took this, multiply it by two, because we have one over here, and we took this and multiplied it by two, and we did all this math, and then we add all of this stuff up, well, we're going to get the perimeter. So that is the easiest approach. So this is exactly the way I'm going to do this right now. So there's not 
you know, if you wrote this over here, 7 uh, x cubed y, then wrote this whole thing right there, that's perfectly fine, but it's not necessary if you understand um, uh, the perimeter, right? Or understand how to calculate it. So we're gonna take this two, we're gonna multiply it by this expression. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So this two, we're gonna use uh, the distributor property. So that's gonna be two times five x squared y. So that gives us a 10 x squared y. Then that two times this, negative three uh, x y squared. That's gonna give us a negative six x y squared. And then this two times this six right here is going to be a 12 or this six, six y cubed. That's gonna be 12 y cubed. So just be very careful with that. So this right here is the result of taking two uh, times this. Now let's do this um, little basic algebra. So two times seven x cubed y is going to of course be 14 x cubed y. And we're gonna add these together because we need to find the sum total. And so that's what this is. That's what is the, uh, that's the perimeter. So when we look at this, what we wanna be doing is seeing, do we have any like terms here? Okay, here's an x squared y. So I'm gonna look out for an x squared y. Now this is pretty close. This is x, y squared, but this is, these two are not like terms. I need to have an exact x squared y. So I'm looking around, I'm like, nah, I don't have one of those. So I'll write that down. Now I'm like, do I have an x, y squared anywhere else? Nope, I don't. So I don't, uh, that's all by itself. Do I have a y cubed anywhere else? Nope, that's, I only have one y cubed. And of course that leaves me with this last term. And the way you uh, write these terms in what particular order is not that important, but that is the perimeter. Now, hopefully you, know, you looked at this problem, you're like, ah, this wasn't that difficult, but this is the type of problem that you would see definitely like in a uh, pre-algebra course, certainly like an algebra one course. So hopefully, you didn't find this that difficult. You certainly need to understand what the perimeter is, and there could be a more interesting type of perimeter problems. Now, if you need help with basic algebra, basic geometry, I'm gonna suggest checking out like my pre-algebra course. I cover all the basics, of course, I teach thoroughly all the algebra, but I do, I do go over a lot of the fundamental uh, geometry concepts you need to know at this level. In other words, things like area, surface area, volume of basic figures, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so hopefully this video helps you out. If that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.